Thanks, Ryan. I'm here with Tyler. You're the director of technology at Flagship, correct? That's correct. Now you're working on Hellgate London. How's it's, that been? It's been great. It's a lot of fun to work on a game that you really are proud of and think it's a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Now let's uh, start at the top for people that might not be too familiar with, with the game. I mean, it takes place in London, and I understand there's some sort of Hellgate? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so about 20 years in the future, demons invade to these Hellgates, uh -huh. and they win. They start out in London, but they take over the whole world. About Sounds like a real bummer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you can't really save the world. It's too late. Uh -huh. About 20 years after that, you're able to fight and take back London. And this is kind of the, the story we have here is the, the local groups trying to take back the city of London and secure that area for humanity. Uh-huh. Um, we've got several different groups. We have the uh, the hunters, uh, which are more the special ops kind of shootery class that we have, which yeah. is all about aiming and first-person shooter style play. Mm -hmm. We have the Tem Knights Templar, who've seen the invasion coming. They've got swords and armor and stuff ready to kill the demons. I bet that they have like, a real "I told you so" kind of attitude. They have a little bit of that going on. And then you have the Kabbalists <laughs> that are kind of the the wacky scientists, but also um, more the kind of magic using um, using demons power against themselves mm -hmm. class that I mean it has two classes for that one of them does a summoning and you can see here a summoner actually using the ultimate giant pet that he can summon nice. to fight in a fight um, and we have another class called the evoker which is your magic blaster class okay now uh, what sort of action I mean it's, it's got role-playing but it's, it's very action-based right right so it's this mix between a first-person shooter and an action RPG okay it's single player and it's massively multiplayer it's got, you know, you, you actually dodge the projectiles, you actually shoot the guns, you have to aim at people. You know, it is, it's truly an action game, but underneath all of this is, you know, you're finding magic items, you're finding that next cool gun, that cool weapon. You've got, we've got over 100 weapons in the game. Wow. We've got six character classes with 20, over 26 skills each. We have a deep and, you know, and very interesting RPG, just like we had in Diablo, kind of sitting underneath this. Right. What looks like is obviously, look, in this case, looks like a shooter, kind of an, um, an online game. Mm -hmm. Now, you say it's massively multiplayer. I mean, how, how many people are you going to run into at the same time? Is that, is that throughout the entire world, or is it kind of instance off? It, um, the actual combat is instance, so, uh. that you can, so you can find your own things to kill. You can have your own bosses to fight. No one's going to be ninja looting from you. No nice. one's going to be getting in your way. But uh, the actual single-player campaign that we have right now feels about right with four or five people playing together. Mm -hmm. If we get too many more than that, it feels to us like it's getting too chaotic and you're not really contributing too much. Right. Um, but once you go to town, which is in between all the different missions you go to, you'll see a lot of people running around together. And you'll be able to do trade and all sorts of commerce things and see that you're part of a much, much larger community. Cool. Now, uh, how will character skill upgrades work? You know, will you, will you be leveling up and, and gaining new abilities? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a lot of questions like that one can easily be answered if you just kind of imagine what happened in Diablo 2. Sure. You go up levels, you get a skill point, you get five attribute points to put in either a willpower, stamina, strength, or accuracy. You get to um, pick which skills you want out of skill trees mm -hmm. and um, decide kind of the direction of strategy you want to go with your character. And as you're running around, you'll find monsters dropping items. You pick those up, decide whether they're better than the ones you have. Maybe change to whole different weapons so you kind of play the game differently, and that'll that'll allow you to advance and change the way you play as you go through the game. Right. Let's talk about the technology behind the game. I mean, you are the director of technology. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what is powering Hellgate London? What's under the hood? We've got our own graphics engine that we made from scratch, and we've able, been able to do a lot of things with that. And we've been trying to push both the high end and the low end uh -huh. with that technology. On the high end, we're able to do DX10 on Vista with multi-core, 64-bit execu native executables are being available. Wow. So we have a ton of kind of high end cool stuff. Yeah. On the opposite extreme, we're trying to aim for a really low min spec. Everything in the game has a low polygon asset version of it. Mm -hmm. We're able to run on on machines that are probably four or five years old or older, wow. you don't have to buy a new machine necessarily to play our game. So you're planning on all kinds of scaling between between those two extremes? Absolutely. Then. We have so many different buckets of different kinds of um, graphics cards and, and, and general hardware technologies that we can accommodate a large number of people. Cool. Now, now, how will the common areas work uh, when you run into all these other players? I mean, how many different players do you think you'll see in one area like that? Is there kind of a limit? Or? Yeah, it's, it's part of it's going to be a limit of what looks too crowded as far as the size of our areas, um, we've got all of our towns are these subway stations, uh -huh. and so I think you know you could reasonably see about 40 to 60 people running around there, and it's still and it okay. feel pretty crowded. We're also looking at making a really large town to have a lot more people running around in. Mm -hmm. We're still working on that and trying to make sure it looks good and feels right for launch, but. Um, we're able to accommodate a lot of people on the screen, 
and, um, and make it feel like you're really part of a very large world. Mm -hmm. but, but the important thing is, even um, if you don't see a lot in your particular town, you're able to invite people from anywhere else on the server, and you're able to go into instances together and, and play together um, with a large, large body of people that are available in the same economy and the same server. Cool. Now, uh, I understand there'll be like different tier levels for accounts and such. How is how right. the subscription stuff going to work? So, so when you buy the game, mm -hmm. you've got a single player campaign that goes all the way up to max level 50. You get to play all the way through the game. You get to play through it a second time at a harder difficulty level. Cool. You go online and you get all of that again for free. You can hop on, you can play all the way up to level 50, get to the max level just like anybody else. Yeah. Play with anybody else on the server. If you pay that $10 a month subscription fee, you're going to get some extra stuff that really makes the game more rich and, and able to do more things. Some examples, you get more character slots, you get more storage space, you get access to hardcore mode, where if you've beaten the game, you can make a hardcore character, and once mm -hmm. you die, you're dead, your character's done. Oh, that's, I had some Diablo 2 hardcore characters that... Oh, I know, uh, they always die a sad, you know, sad death. You can hang out in town, though, and show off the level you got to and nice. say, look, I actually got to be a level 50 evoker. I made it. <laughs> um, and then we have a whole, bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of other little features that, you can, um, that we'll be adding over time. Uh -huh. Those are kind of just the mainly a, lot of, a few of the launch things we'll be doing. Yeah. But we'll be adding an auction house, email system, a lot of guild support stuff, cool. some on launch, but even more afterwards. Mm -hmm. We'll be adding new character classes over the first year. We'll be adding new weapons, monsters, other PvP arenas. Lots of stuff that just makes it for a richer experience and more things to enjoy in Hellgate London. Cool. How will the player versus player stuff work? Will it be kind of a separate arena for that? Right now, we've got a separate arena where you can just do team versus team fighting. Uh -huh. But um, we're going to look at doing a lot more gameplay modes because we have cool. a bunch of other gameplay modes that started as part of the plot that uh -huh. you'll see kind of as you get towards the end of the game. And we're going to try to adapt and change those things to make it cool for PvP. Awesome. Let's uh, kick it over to the audience for some questions, see what they have to say. Excellent. Jody Robinson, you got any questions for us over there? Yes, Brent Latham from Georgia would like to know, is there a monthly fee? Is there a monthly fee? Yeah, so yeah. So the way it works is... There will be a monthly fee. There can, you can pay a monthly fee for these additional features, but you can play, play online for free without that if you want. Yeah. You can pay it for a while, see what you like, enjoy the game, and decide you're not, you don't want to pay that anymore for a little bit. And then when you come back, you can try it out again for free, keep playing with those characters, and decide whether you want to upgrade with the fee again or not. So it sounds like there's plenty of options there. Absolutely. Cool. All right, Jody, why don't you give me two more questions? Mario Lamas uh, from Mexico would like to know if he could, uh, cust oh, how do you customize your character? And he loves your hat, just says everybody <laughs> else loves his hat. So. <laughs> awesome. So the um, customizing your character. So you can pick a lot of clothing things, obviously. Uh, you can pick uh, helmets, <laughs> armor, all sorts of things, kind of like you saw in Diablo 2, where you find magic properties on different items, and you find um, lots of different weapons in the game. Uh -huh. We have over 100 weapons that really do different things. And we're not just talking about the red one versus the blue one. Sure. We, we're talking about a wide, wide variety of different shooter options. And then you have your whole skill tree that allows you to customize, whether you're summoning this kind of pet, that kind of pet, mm -hmm. emphasizing sniper mode versus rapid fire all sorts of things like that with over 26 skills per class and six different classes you've got a lot of customization that you could do in this game cool can you respec if you get down a certain path and decide you want to reset no we talked about that a lot and there's a lot of controversy around that but really what it comes down to is we feel like you need to make a decision and commit in your character that this is who you are and this is the strategy you're going with and I don't want you to reach a really high level and just kind of go back and forth across all the skills and get uh -huh. to see everything I want you to play from the beginning and kind of try out a strategy play that strategy and that's who that character is and if you want to play again and do a different strategy, you can do that. Make a new character. Yeah. Cool. All right, Jody, why don't you give me the last question? Clayton Schultz from Ontario would like to know how in-depth the inventory system will be, like magic, unique items, and so forth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we have the, we have the full in-depth um, inventory system that you're used to seeing from Diablo. You've right. got magic items, you've got my, items with multiple properties, items that we've custom made with certain properties on them. And we've also got items that you could put um, sockets into. Your weapons, you're able to put ammo clips, battery packs, fuel, all sorts of things on it that modify the damage that your weapon does. Uh -huh. And on top of all of this, you're able to customize the color look of your character such that um, we, have a, we have a palette for your character that, such that all is color coordinated. Uh -huh. and you can pick which palette you want by picking which armor gives you that palette. And in general, okay. your guy's always going to look cool. You're going to be able to pick what items and stuff goes with your strategy, and you've got a lot of weapons to choose from for how you kill monsters and run around the game. Awesome. That sounds awesome. You know what? 
let's get some more questions. I want to know more about Hellgate London. I'm sure we're getting a ton of questions from people at home. Jody, why don't you just, let's say let's say three more questions. What do you say? Okay, great. Uh, Daniel Undorf from Germany would like to know: Are there any modern weapons like guns? Specifically. Well, yeah. Okay, guns. so let me talk about some of the different kinds of guns. Because we, we put a couple guns that are sort of like machine guns and things. Uh -huh. And then we have a sniper rifle and all that. But we also we have such a wide variety from, like, the uh, locust hive, which shoots out a hive of, of locusts that go from monster to monster doing area effect poison damage. <laughs> we have the blaze pistol that shoots darts into monsters that explode a, a second and a half later into a big explosion to nice. kill other guys. We have, like, a viral lance that does a poison laser that can hurt a monster and then poison it over time. That is the most devious thing I've heard all day. A laser that poisons? Exactly. Madness. We, have, we just have a wide, wide variety of weaponry here to choose from. And when I say 100 guns, I really mean there's a wide variety here. Um, and so you can, you're, you're going to see your shotgun, you're going to see your machine gun, you're going to see your sniper rifle, pistol, rocket launcher, it's like you're seeing every other shooter. Right. But you're going to see all these other things instead. It just blows your mind. That's, that sounds really cool. Jody, hit me with the next one. Emil Sorensen from Denmark would like to know, are there any professions or classes in the game? Yeah, there's yeah, six different... Let me classes, talk a little yeah. more about the classes. So there's six different character classes. Yeah. We have two in the Templar. One's the Guardian, which is a defensive melee class. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Blade Master, which is an offensive melee class. Um, the offensive one's got all these whirlwind skills and flurry and throw sword and things to do more damage. Cool. And the defensive one's got like a shield bash, auras that when he's surrounded by more monsters, he heals faster or has more armor or something, so he really wades into the pack mm -hmm. and can survive like that tank that you want him to be. Yeah. And then for the shooter classes, we have the marksman and the engineer. The marksman is your pure shooter class. He's got sniper mode, rapid fire, um, tactical stance throwing grenades, uh, calling down call downs like napalm, cool. all sorts of kind of cool shootery stuff. Yeah. And then for the engineer, you've got a couple of those shooter things, but you've also got this big drone that you can make, put guns on it, put a sword on the front of it, slap some armor on it, nice. tell it to heal you, do all sorts of customization to it, as well as all these bots that fly around targeting guys for you, shooting rockets, and these like nanobots that could fly out, attach to a monster, and when you shoot it, it explodes. <laughs> this cloud of nanobots goes to another monster, you shoot it, it explodes, awesome. and you kind of follow the nanobots around, shooting the right guys to get explosions. And then the final two classes, you have the summoner, which has all these big pets you can summon, uh -huh. and elementals, and you have the evoker, which is a big blaster class. There's all sorts of ways to get damage out there against the monsters. So it sounds like you want to have a pretty well-rounded party. Absolutely. Well, you can, and then I think the different kinds of classes are going to work together really well. Uh -huh. But you, this game is totally soloable all the way through. You can solo nice. through the game without any problem. But if you bring in other characters, we make the other players, and you play together, it's going to make the game harder. Yeah. It's going to be harder to kill the monsters, but you're all going to get some reward. You're all going to get experience, and you're going to want to have to work together to try to make sure you don't die because it is yeah, more difficult. Yeah. But if people leave, they go back to town, they need to go to the restroom, whatever, you're there by yourself, and it goes right back to being as if you're playing by yourself and can play through on your own. Nice, so you're never kind of at the mercy of other players. You can do what you want to do Absolutely. when you want to do Absolutely, this is it. one of those games you can hop on for 10 or 15 minutes, feel like you're going to find some cool items, get through another quest or two. You might be playing for three or four hours <laughs> after that, <laughs> yeah. but at least you'll have this feeling like I can get in there and accomplish something for, after playing just a little while. Cool, all right, Jody, let's make this the last question. <laughs> Nick Ritano from Connecticut would like to know, are there any type of uh, forms of transportation for vehicles or any type of... Hmm. Any kind of transport? Yeah, that? we're not doing it specifically vehicles, but what we do have is every time you've been to one of our cities, you earn kind of the, the right to warp to that city. Okay. So you can go from city to city all you want. So pretty much getting from, from beginning of the game or to, to the action is very fast all the time. We're really big on not having to uh, ride a mount or ride something that'll get you to where you want to fight. Yeah. But just to get you there as quick as possible, and you're just in town, you sell your stuff, you get your quest, you get back out there and get fighting again. Awesome. Sounds, uh, sounds like a winner, Tyler. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for coming by. When is Hellgate London scheduled to come out? It's coming out pretty soon. We've, uh, in January, we said we'd be ha done this summer. Mm -hmm. If it takes a few more months after that, that'll be okay. All right, cool. Thanks a lot for coming by. Right. The game is Hellgate London coming out for the PC.